To me, Vert Manager is the best option for virtual machines on a Linux desktop because it ties into QEMU and that is baked into the kernel. VirtualBox occasionally might be needed for certain distributions that are designed to work best on VirtualBox, but for general everyday virtualization, Vert Manager is the way to go in my opinion. In this video, we'll take a look at how to install this on Fedora or Nirvara and see what they have done to make this an easy prospect. So the first thing you need to do before we actually install anything is we need to make sure that our CPU supports virtualization. To do that, we want to run the command that I'm going to hit enter here. And of course, I will have this in my article as well. And you're essentially looking for something like this. It doesn't have to say exactly this, but you're looking for some text here that isn't command not found. If you get nothing, then it looks like your CPU doesn't support virtualization. But what you need to also make sure of is that you go out into BIOS and actually turn on virtualization there. So this is a little difficult to capture because I can't have OBS running while that is running. So instead of getting out the capture card and running it through a different computer and all that, I'm just gonna take a screen picture of my monitor once I get that. And I will show you kind of where it is in my particular BIOS. It's gonna be a little bit different in everybody's. So you may need to look up the manufacturer of your motherboard and BIOS and see where that option would be. Now that we've done that, Fedora and thus Novara offer a very simple way to install virtualization. If I say sudo dnf install and then at virtualization, it's gonna ask me for my password, of course. It's gonna come up and it's gonna install QEMU, it's gonna install, install Vert Manager, it's gonna install LiveVert, and several other packages. These are the mandatory packages. There are some optional ones you can install, and I will have that command across the bottom if you want to install the optional packages as well. And of course, that'll be in the article linked in the description. Now that that's done, we wanna say sudo systemctl start libvertd. And then we're gonna do the same thing, except instead of start, we're gonna say enable. And what that does is it actually makes it so that libvertd starts every time we start the computer. We can check to see the KVM installed correctly. And so we say lsmod grep kvm. And that looks like what I'd expect. We should be able to hit our super key now and just start typing in vert. And there we go, virtual machine manager, there it is. Notice here that it's asking me for my password. I'm gonna cancel that. I'm gonna add myself to the libvert group. And we can do that with, with this command right here. And so now when we say virtual, at least maybe, now we're all set. So if you don't wanna use root privileges every single time you start up virtual machine manager, that is the way to get around that. Now that the app is open, we should be able to simply click here to create a new virtual machine. It's gonna ask us what we wanna do. It's a local install media, not network. In this case, you could uh, use one of these others if you had the option to do so. So I'm gonna browse. Okay, and this screen is a little bit confusing because you're thinking you're going to be selecting ISO and you may come down in here plus, plus here. But this is actually trying to create a storage pool, not actually find an ISO. So what you wanna do is hit browse local and then look for your ISO file. I should have an Ubuntu Unity one right here, I do. That's gonna choose the ISO there. Automatically detect the installation medium. If for some reason you have something and it's not something typical, it's something like Nobara that's a little bit different, you may want to uncheck this and just start typing. So I'm gonna just start typing Ubuntu and then I'm gonna pick 2210 because that is what this is closest to. If you have something like a beta that maybe it's not in this list, pick what you think is the closest to it. So we'll go on and go forward. And it's gonna, this may pop up the first time that it doesn't have search permissions for this path. If, you, if that's the case and you want to use this path, you'll have to say yes. Uh, it's gonna ask you how much memory and how many CPUs. Uh, I'm gonna go in and give this six or seven CPUs. Uh, let's go eight, because we have 16 available. We have about 16 gigabytes of memory, so let's go ahead and give it 8192. We'll give it eight gigs of RAM, and we'll go on and move forward. 
It's gonna ask you if you wanna enable storage for this machine, and then it's gonna ask you if you wanna create a disk image. You can actually create an image on a separate hard drive. And if you were gonna use this for more than just playing around or checking distros out, then I would recommend doing that because you're gonna get better performance out of that probably than you are if you keep it on the local drive, especially if you're gonna do this for something like Windows. I'm gonna go in and accept these options and I'll hit forward. I'm just, this is just a confirmation that everything's correct. I'm gonna go finish and it's gonna do that. And then it's going to come up with this. And if I hit the little button up there, we're gonna try to ins try and install. It's gonna come up with all of this stuff. So now if I kind of scroll up, you'll see these options. I can leave full screen or I can send key combinations. So if I needed to send a specific key combination, I could do that. But I'm gonna install Unity 2210. And I'm just gonna kind of show you what this install looks like because there is a little bit of a difference when you get to the hard drive in particular. But this is all gonna be very similar to, you know, the Nubara install. But for the moment, we'll just go English US, English US, continue. We're gonna say, what are we gonna start with? I'm just gonna pick a normal installation because I don't plan to keep using this after this video. Uh, and let's not download updates just to save some time here. But uh, if you were doing this for real, I would recommend, you know, considering some of these things, especially the third party graphics and all that if you needed that. All right, so here's where it can be scary. You see this erase disk, right? I know this seems really scary and you're like, I don't wanna erase my OS and, and you won't. This is actually just talking about the virtual storage area that you created. So if you have this on a separate disk, yes, it is gonna take up that entire disk. But if you just have this to a 25 gigabyte storage pool like I do, then it's only gonna take up that 25 gigabyte storage pool. That is all. It's not actually gonna to touch your underlying Linux install or anything like that. So we're going to hit install now and it's going to tell you that the changes below will be written to disk otherwise. And notice here the partition tables of the following devices are changed and it says virtual disk one VDA. And then it's going to say virtual disk one VDA VDA. That just, again, that's just a reinforcement that we are using a virtual disk and not a physical hard drive. So I hit continue. And this is where it's going to ask like some stuff about your location for the time zone and uh, we're gonna give it a username unity and sure and it's just kind of doing its thing now and we'll be back once this is finished so once we finish it'll ask you if you want to continue testing and restart now just for the moment I'm gonna hit continue testing and I'm gonna get out of the max maximized version here and then I'm gonna shut this down on a real computer, you'd have to go and pull the USB key out so that you didn't boot back into that. In this case, I believe we need to go and pull the ISO from the actual setup. Okay, we'll start to try to start the virtual machine again and see if it go back goes back into our ISO. Nope, it doesn't look like it is. So sometimes, let's uh, go on and maximize this up in the top right hand corner, click that. So it doesn't look like we have to do that anymore, but in the past you'd have to actually go and like eject the ISO. So I'm gonna go to the options here and see if I can change the display to be 1920 by 1080, apply. Yeah, and keep this configuration, sure. All right, so now we should be able to move around. It's not actually letting me use the super key and meta key in there. So let's go to app or let's go to solitaire. Yeah, solitaire, because you know, that's what we need. But as you can see, everything seems to be working just as we'd expect here. And we're able to successfully play solitaire uh, because you know, that's what we, we installed a virtual machine to do. Anyway, there's that. But I could go in here, I could, you know, start up LibreOffice in the virtual machine seems to be responding relatively well here. And so as you can see, LibreOffice started right up here. I can go up here in the corner and close it. But as you can see, everything seems to be working as expected. And that is how you'd go about setting up a basic virtual machine. So as you can see, everything's working as expected. And that's how you'd go and set up a very basic virtual machine. 
There are things you can do, like I say, installing on a separate hard drive. If you were going to run Windows in particular, that is something I would recommend. You can do things like GPU pass-through. You need at least two GPUs to do that. There are more things you can do with Vert Manager. It is a very powerful virtualization tool and one that as you want to explore other Linux distributions without wiping out your current install, it's a great option to do so. That's it for this one. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.